Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dave Noodles, and we are on the Type 88 Show, where we talk to people about how they turn their dreams into reality. And this guy right here, he doesn't let anything stop him. You could you could hit him with the hardest thing, and he's going to bounce right back. And he, he's going to be sharing his story with us, you know, how he's overcome something that blows my mind. He's going to be talking about his story, where he came up in, where he's going now, his dreams, and so many other great tales, and um, and talking about his process and all that good stuff. So I want to welcome Pathogenic to the Type 88 Show. What's up, man? What's good? Hi, everyone. How's it going? Pleased to be here. Really happy. It's good to have you on the show, man. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's been talking over a while. We finally made it work. That's, that's the best part. Yeah, yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, maybe let us know where you started. Where did you grow up? So I, I'm actually from uh, a province in Canada uh, called Alberta, which is on the west side. It's not necessarily the west coast, but it's beside British Columbia, which is the west coast. So we're almost as west as you can get. And uh, I currently live in, I guess, central Alberta is what you would call it. But I was born in, in the north uh, in Alberta. My dad uh, was, a, was a drill bit salesman for drilling rigs. And so he did a lot of work up there. And so I was born about five hours north from where I am now and uh, ended up living there for, for eight years, moved south, and then grew up uh, just south of Calgary by about 30 minutes. And so that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm from, I guess. That's awesome, man. The, my first introduction to Canada was <laughs> was my guy Bret Hart, bro. And like, oh. I did not know what can I I just saw it on the map, and I yeah. I didn't know if it was because I was little. I was like seven, eight. I didn't know if it was a state. You know, I didn't know all my states yet, and yeah. it was like so close but so far. And yep. then and Brett kind of introduced me to Canada and I learned about some of the culture but it's great to have friends out there you know and so yeah. what was kind of like the the music scene growing up there you know yeah. maybe you could kind of break that down for us I'll also say before I get into the music scene yeah that the the Hart family dungeon was like a living legend growing up like we all heard about it and kind of knew about it and knew that it was in the area because it's around the Calgary area but nobody ever knew where it was. No, you couldn't ask somebody, hey, could we go out there and you could like drive past it and we'll check it out? That didn't happen. It could, but you knew that it was there. It was kind of this hidden secret. It was pretty cool. That's so cool. Um, when it comes to the music scene, like growing up, and and this will be a little bit of a surprise for people that, that know me from what I do now when it comes to being a part of battle rap and, and the hip hop culture, but... I grew up listening to only rock and roll and metal music, everything from the early 70s all the way through to the 2000s, 2010s. That was the kind of music that I listened to. And I went to tons of car concerts like that. And it wasn't until maybe five years ago that I started to listen to hip hop and get into hip hop. And it was because of my little brother. And he's the one who showed it to me. And took me to a hip hop show in Red Deer. And I saw the show. And at that point, I'd been to dozens of rock concerts, loved it. But I saw that hip hop show and I went, this is different than anything I've ever seen before. The way that they're performing on stage, the way that the crowd is interacting, the, the vibe that you get from the people that are there. I said, I want to be a part of this it felt more personal in a way when you're at a rock concert, you're just one of thousands in a stadium and the, and you can barely see the band on stage. So you feel so separated from them, but at a, at a rap or hip hop show, they're right there. And, and you almost kind of feel the passion that they have for what they're doing up there. And, and it, oh, it, it was incredible. So I, I guess all of my musical knowledge about hip hop, it comes from my little brother. 
Wow. Shout out yeah. to him. Yeah. What was that concert? Uh, it was Apathy and Self Titled. Nice. Who still two of my absolute favorites. I I've I've seen them probably three or four times. Every time they come through uh Alberta, I definitely go make sure I go check them out. But yeah, I love more of the underground boom bap type uh rap, whether that's like Army of the Pharaohs, Apathy, Self Titled, um, Vinny Paz rj Payne, you know that's that kind of stuff and one that i've been really listening to right now that i absolutely adore is rhyme asylum out of england that they're fantastic that's amazing man yeah i love hip-hop it it literally molded my my childhood like it yeah it taught me so much from yeah it introduced me to places i i've never visited and gave me a reason to visit them. You know, as a kid from Westerly, just hearing these people's struggles. Yeah. And then what they went through to get to where they are, it was just, it was so real. It was just like the big brother that I wish I had. You know, I never yeah. had a big brother. You you, yeah. you you, just said, you know, you have a brother. I have a younger brother, and uh, yeah. he's an absolute blessing. But I never had a big brother that was like, hey, do you know about this? Have you been here? Have you checked this out? Yeah. And um, hip hop was that to me. And it was a lot of lost innocence learning from hip hop. But it's also opened my eyes to so many things and made me understand things and be like, oh, wow, I don't want it. I don't want to go this way. Yeah. Oh, this guy went through this. Oh, he he got caught up in this just lessons even today just yeah so much to it and what can i take from that and apply to myself to not end up there yeah it's, it's special it's a very special culture that i don't think a lot of people realize how impactful it can be on your future decision makings yeah it's real i actually want to start a whole topics about like specific albums and what the album taught me. Yeah. Because every cool. album, if you just think of the the evolution of an album from just like think of like Eminem, like from the Slim Shady, like that yeah. is going to teach you something way different than recovery. Yes. And then revival. And then so like I want I kind of want to tap into that. Like what did I learn from this album? Like where did it take me? Um, but hip hop, bro, it takes you to so many places, and and look at you, bro. You've been battling artists from all over the world. Yeah, it's, places it's, that I never thought I'd ever go. You have people here. We are. I'm from Staten Island, home of the Wu Tang. We're for, you know we're homies now because yeah. because of battle rap, and, yeah. and I battle connecting the dots with us, and um, it's amazing. It just takes it just connects people, and it. It it's I mean it's just so amazing. I could talk about hip hop forever. It's crazy. Like I'm I'm a I'm a kid from Okotoks, Alberta, who battled in Method Man Studio in Staten Island with I battle. <laughs> yeah. Like ne like I, <laughs> you know, all my friends that l had li listened to Wu Tang are now asking me what it was like when I was there, and can't believe that it's. Never thought that I'd be in, in these positions. And honestly, a lot of a lot of my life has been like that, where I find myself in a situation that I never thought that I'd be in. And that just turns out to be a really special thing. Yeah. So maybe we could even break that down, right? Because like there's hi there's hip hop and then of course like battle rap is like this country, right? Yeah. It's like like hip hop's like the world per se yeah. and then like battle raps like this country almost that not everyone listens to it a lot of people yeah. know about it not everyone has visited there but yeah. like when they get it anyone who's visited the battle rap scene it's like nothing else there's so much love it's so tight knit everyone yeah, you know you think it's animosity it feels like it on the on the stage but there's so much love and like amount of respect that I've felt 
and I'm not even a battle rapper. You know, I'm just make I'm making the threads and and collaborating with artists in the scene on on merch. But like maybe you could kind of talk about that, right? Because you're you were into the ba- the boom bap scene, hip hop yeah. scene as a whole, but then you you found yourself in the in the battle rap world so how did that even how did that even connect because that's so, a whole other world like it's it's a completely different avenue and what originally happened was i have my little brother and he tells me about hip hop and tells me about this show and takes me through it and i see it and and we come home from that and we go wow that was amazing and just like every other person who is a fan of, of rap music, we went, we could do that. Why don't we try and do that? Yeah. So we tried writing songs and finding you know, your typical just YouTube instrumental beats and tried writing songs to it. And I'm not going to lie, bro. It was really shitty. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the worst. <laughs> I couldn't write to save my life when it came to a beat and i we tried forever and it was probably about six months that i tried and finally i was like i can't i can't fit what i want to say into the musical time that i have because the beat does limit you to what you're able to say if you try and ramble on for too long or add certain inflections you can't do that you're stuck to the construction of what the beat allows you to do and so my brother comes up to my a place at the time i was uh, in college and he shows me uh, a battle and i think it was dumbfounded versus conceited um and i watched that and was blown away because now i'm looking at these guys who are able to say what they want because there is no there's no constraint that is keeping what you want to say enclosed and so i went wow that is that is crazy and at that moment i just watched as much of it as i could try to take all of it in and he said you know what why don't you why don't you try and do that try and write with no beat as if you were battling somebody and see if you could do that. And so I tried that out. I was, wow, this is going really well. Maybe I should try and find a place locally that I could do this at. So uh, I maybe had been listening to Battle Rap for about six months at the time and ended up signing up for my first one with a local league and, uh, and the rest is history. Wow, and and here I am now, and I guess I, I progressed through that league, got some opportunities in other places. The right eyes, the right eyes saw what I was doing and and liked it, and so now I'm, now I'm like I guess I'm more prominent in the battle rap community than I ever thought I would be. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so cool. It's just, I love it when, you know you you become a fan yeah and you get so into it and you just find you just and you just keep surviving in a way to like find your way into it right like we we both loved hip hop i started emceeing as well i put out a whole album yeah like 12 13 years ago and most people who met me will never even know this or even be able to find it but like I love the scene so much. Same thing. It was like, all right, maybe this isn't my thing thing. It's a thing that I love so, so much. I'm going to hold it tight yes, and make it part of, it's still part of my life. But what's my thing? What What's the thing that I could really do to, to make my con- contribution to the culture or yes. make, cre- create a career without having to, to get a job, you know, by doing what I love like how do I find a way to work and it's cool we just when you just keep going and you keep exploring you find a way to survive in whatever it is I tell people that it's meant to be when you love something so much you will find a way to contribute to it in your own way which is the other important thing is that we're all different yeah and so 
you're never going to get anywhere trying to imitate or emulate what someone else has done to get into there, to get into that culture. You have to bring your own thing to the table. Yeah. Create your own style, create your own lane in a way. And if it's something that you love, then it's not even, it's not even work. It's yep. just the process. So true. So true. The, the word started always comes back to me. It's like, why'd you start? Why? Well, start, where did you start? Where did the love start in you? And yeah. then as long as I could kind of tap into that, it, it just gives me this refresher. Even though I got, I have long days, super, I got tired. It's stressful creating things mm -hmm. to then be like, okay, well, I got to pay my bill with this. I, I want to make sure it does well. You know, there's this pressure to do it. But like, if you just do it at such a, a pace, 100%. you just find, and it's true, you just find a way. And it's, um, yeah. And the other thing about it too, and, and this is something that I'm really lucky for is that my love and evolution in the scene, battle rap and hip hop overall is very strongly tied to my family now as well, because my brother is the one that introduced it to me. So now anytime that gets brought up where, you know, how did you start? Why this? It always brings back a very strong, positive memory for me of, of him and I. And so it's almost like he, in a weird way, was the brains of, of my dream yeah. and, and allowed me to be able to pursue it. And so I, you know, he's grown up now. Uh, we're five years apart. So he's just at the start of his 20s. And, and so now that he's got more of a solid job and the ability to take time off, something that I'm really hoping is moving forward is that I can bring him with me to these events as well and meet these people that I get to meet because it's just as cool for him to meet them as it is for me. And I would never be able to if it wasn't for him in the first place. So it's it, it's so real, and yeah. you you make such an amazing point. Just having him believing in you, right before you even believed in yourself, because like I always say, oh okay, well I believe in myself, I'm good. But like it helps so so much to have one person believe in you before even you do, yeah. because. In the beginning, you're you're learning. You you're hitting the wall. You're not the best. You you have very little respect, right? You're not getting yeah. the opportunities. It's hard. It's hard. 100%. In the day ones of your journey. Yeah. So to have someone before the day one be like, "Yo, I believe in you. Yeah. Go for it." And it, it's as simple as that, right? Like just the simplest thing of someone being like, "Yo." go for this yeah and pushing you in to swim and and you'd be like what what all right you know and then you figuring it out but like that's so powerful bro just to have a brother like that to have yeah. you know a supporting person in your life it's so yeah. it's so key and the best part about it too is that when at least with this journey that i've been on the nice thing is that when you have a day one like that, that says, I believe in you, you can go do it and pushes you to swim like that. If you're swimming in a very inefficient way, those people that first started, will tell you, Hey, that's garbage. <laughs> Don't do it like that. Yeah. And, and that's the other best part about it is I, I, there was times where I'd have, I'd have written things that I thought was great. And I'd say, yo, Mason, what do you think of this? And he would straight up look at me and go, that's terrible. <laughs> you need to write something else. Oh, man. And I appreciate that because when it comes to battle rap, a lot of the times people start to, I mean, you become friends. And the last thing you want to do is tell your friends something that might hurt them. And, and when you're creating something, when you're writing something and, and it's this formulated piece of what you have created hearing somebody else tell you that that's not good or it could be better is tough and especially coming from your friend 
but it's something that you need in order to, to be able to take the next step and get better at what you're doing. Obviously, hopefully in a constructive way that doesn't tear you down. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is important to have people that not only believe in you, but want to see you do better and believe in teaching you and telling you the right way. Yeah. It's so it's so real, right? And and it's cool to even take it and then you could be constructive with the constructive criticism because sometimes yeah. you know the right things. You're like, yo, I feel it. I'm going to stick with it. Like, And you know yeah. in the heart, your heart of heart, you're, you're rocking with this part. Yeah. But then they say something, you're like, they say something about it, but then it like applies to something else like yo the emphasis oh yeah. you weren't me you weren't making eye contact like 100 all of us and you're like so like we can learn from everyone bro that's what i say bro like lifelong learners forever like that's how yeah. we got to be in life we we can never close our book of learning yep that it's the most silliest thing we could ever do but we're like i'm good oh i'm i'm 90 I, or i'm 60 that i'm yeah. not i can't learn from that eight-year-old yeah what is what does he know yeah bro like i've learned from little kids of just to take life a little less serious yeah which they didn't even know they were teaching me because they were just so they, they were just, just in the, yeah they were just in it. yeah and it reminded me like wait a minute don't take all this too too serious yeah and there, and there, I've even realized it in myself, bro. Like I've even got like sillier, and I, for a long time, I was kind of like really serious, even though I am silly, but I feel it like coming back somehow, yeah. like where I like do mad silly things, and I'm just like, oh wait, I've been waiting to feel this again, but it's yeah. like me kind of letting go, of yeah. like taking the littlest thing serious that maybe someone didn't even intend to make me feel a type of way. And it was just them being that, you know, I'm getting a little all over the place, but like it goes back to learning from people, bro. Like hundred percent. And it's a, and it's a really important thing to talk about too. Like I, I was in a, the last seven, eight months has been very crazy for me. And I was at a stage where everything was serious. And ever since January and everything that happened with me, I've completely had to shift my mindset and look at things differently. And sometimes it takes a wake up call like that to be able to see it. I mean, I wish I had learned it from, from kids instead of a train, but you yeah. know, the, the lesson was there still. And being able to take a negative and turn it into a positive is really important too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you were, you were briefly talking about it, but like maybe what, you know, I, I don't even, you know, I, I kind of know what happened, but I don't, I don't even know the, you know, what happened really, but I know, you know, you're here for a reason. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what you could tell us about that moment. I don't know how much um, you want to talk about, but yeah, maybe you could well, kind of talk about like whatever you want to share, I guess. No worries. Uh, when it comes to everything that happened, it's a little bit, it, it's tough for me because I don't remember. So yeah. a lot of what I know about what happened was relayed to me by uh, various people that were close to me. So um, on January 10th, uh, it was um, Monday, I believe. And it was technically my day off from work. And I was going back into work to drop something off. And there is an unmarked railway crossing that leads into the entrance area. And I ended up driving and getting hit by the train. I uh, T-boned the driver's side of my vehicle. And so I don't know what happened because I, I don't remember it, but uh, I can only assume that I didn't see it. And because there's no arms or anything, I, I would have just 
driven into the into the path of the oncoming train. And so that was on January 10th. And the next time that I can actually sort of remember anything is on the 16th. So there's about six days that just totally got wiped from my memory. And I got hit at 10.30 a.m. on that Monday morning, but I don't remember anything that entire day. I don't remember anything until, you know, I remember January 9th, that night before I went to bed, Sunday night, and remembered what happened then, but everything else, no clue. So I woke up in the hospital and and being told you know do you know what happened to you do you know where you are and i had no clue where i was or why i was there and so um i ended up i ended up breaking 16 ribs uh so 10 on my left side six on my right side and on on the vertebrae in your back there's there's the bone in the center and there's two little like discs that go on either side of the bone and a lot of your muscles attach like for your shoulder and the muscles around your ribs attached to those two discs and that's your spinal transverse and i broke one of the spinal transverse on my vertebrae as well kind of broken on the edge there so that was uh that, that was the extent of my broken bones um, and then I punctured both my lungs. So both my lungs were punctured and they collapsed. So that was also an injury. Uh, and then they, when they used the jaws of life and got me out of my car and put me in the ambulance, I, I died in the ambulance. So my heart stopped and the ambulance workers had to bring me back. And so they brought me back and stabilized me. And at that point, they knew that they were going to have to take me to a hospital in Calgary or Edmonton, because I'm kind of in between. And because it was lung related, the, the best lung doctor in Alberta is in Calgary. So the uh, air ambulance, the helicopter came stopped on the highway and picked me up and took me to the, to the hospital that day. So. Wow. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty crazy. Damn. And it was this, the wildest thing to wake up to. I'll, I'll tell you that. But definitely not. Uh, at, at the end of the day, I'm really lucky. Like I'm not only lucky to still be alive, but I'm lucky because I don't remember anything. My brain took all of this very traumatic information and either blocked it behind a lot of mental barricades or wiped it from my memory base and said, you don't need that. Wow. So for me, it was all physical based. I woke up in the hospital and I had a really hard time moving and I had chest tubes in to get rid of the cavity of air that was between my ribs and my lungs. And so I could hardly move around, but emotionally and memory wise, it was very, very easy for me to deal with. Oh my God. But for my girlfriend, for my family, it has not been that easy. I've met my girlfriend at the, the zoo that we worked at together and she was working that day. So she was on, the site after it happened what while all of this occurred and so the emotional trauma that and the mental trauma that she has from that accident i i can't even fathom what that's like and helping her try and get through it has been harder for me than it was healing my bones <laughs> wow so yeah that it was uh it was pretty crazy. Bro, and, and you're able to walk now too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was the hard that was That's one of the hardest crazy. things at the very beginning was relearning how to walk. Cause I my experience in the hospital was a lot more uh 
centralized and focused. There wasn't, I, I didn't spend that much time there. I, I got there on the 10th. I was out of ICU on the 17th and I was out of the hospital on the 20, the evening of the 26th. And so the amount of time it took for me, you know, I was only laying in the hospital bed for six, seven, only about a week before they had me trying to get up and, and start walking again, really? wow. and trying to gain that strength back. And so it was, you know, walking around exercises around the floor when I could with my walker. Um, and then, you know, one, that was once I got my chest tubes pulled out because I had the little, the machine that the tubes were attached to had to follow me. So anywhere I went, I had to have this little machine, which was a pain to wow. try and bring with you when you were walking. But uh, once the chest tubes were removed, then I could walk around more freely and try and do that kind of thing. So it took a while though, to get my strength back. I lost about well, 30 pounds in the hospital wow. over the 17 days that I was there. Yeah. That's something yeah. else, man. For And for you to get back, I know people that have been in some car accidents. They were in the hospital for months, bro. Yeah. So for you to, I don't know how the health, I know, you know, the health care, the hospitals out in Canada, they maybe move a little different because that, that happened quick. You were back home after a week or so? Well, just out of ICU. Okay. Yeah. I didn't leave the hospital itself until like day 16, 17. That's still yeah. pretty fast. So it was about two, two and a half weeks that I was in the hospital for. For what happened to you, I... That blows my mind that you were there only two weeks or so. Yeah. Yeah. Went and, then from, you were, and then when you were home and you were just, you had to like do rehab at home. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So it was, I mean, uh, I was very fortunate. My aunt is a physiotherapist. And so she had uh, come and, and told me a lot of exercises that I was going to need to do. Obviously ones regarding my, the muscles around my ribs, um, the muscles around my shoulder and uh, making sure that that was okay. But one of the biggest things too, was just walking, just making sure that I kept moving and walking and making sure that I knew how to, you know, keep doing all of that and keep my endurance up. And then I also had to actually have it here, but this little guy here was a really important because this is a spirometer. So for those who don't know, this tests your lung capacity. And so having your lungs punctured, that was important for not only the doctors in the hospital at the time for me to be practicing, but also as your ribs start to heal back together, if you aren't expanding your lungs and trying to keep those ribs moving with it, they can heal in a place that doesn't allow for your uh, lungs to fully expand. Wow. So the entire time, you know, I, I was on a lot of drugs while I was in the hospital and was all over the place mentally, but my girlfriend was there every day with me and she always was giving me this thing and trying to get me to do it. And I remember, you know, six days in, doing this and hitting like 500 a thousand if i was lucky which i don't know if you can see it on here but that's like here mm -hmm. <laughs> and i remember doing it and going wow i really suck at this and the the doctors would tell me well your lungs were not working so you're doing pretty good wow and telling me that you know four thousand, which is the top level is is hard for normal people to hit so it kind of put it in perspective for me. And now wow. I can, I can hit 4,000 and keep inhaling for maybe even another, you know, seven, eight seconds. So I, I, you know, it's back to normal for me there, but yeah, it was a very, even though it was only two weeks in the hospital, it was a very long process because I spent the two weeks there and then I spent a month living at my mom's house in Calgary with my girlfriend and just making sure that we were close to the hospital in case anything happened. Because at that time I still had a blood clot on my lung and the, uh, um, 
pneumothorax issue that I had. If I can't even remember if that's the word, but the, the air between my ribs and my lungs, they still weren't sure if that was gone or not. Mm. So I had to do, you know, three weeks outside of the hospital, get another chest X-ray, then trauma was going to look at it and give me another call and make sure that everything was okay. Wow. And so I spent, I spent my time in the hospital and then I spent the month healing and recovering in my mom's house in Calgary while my girlfriend and I did all of the insurance work with my car did I, I had a, an amazing amount of support from absolutely everyone from my family my friends and the battle rap community really banded together and I can't even describe to you the amount of love that I felt in that moment it was it, it was special and it really reaffirmed for me that this is home mm. that battle rap itself is, is home for me and so you know it, it kept me going forwards i had the best people in my corner and when you got those people that like we talked about that say we believe in you it it, it becomes easier and i had the right people to talk to as well wow. um, for anyone who is a battle rap fan and is watching uh organic who is the the founder i guess would be the word and, and the, the man who runs king of the dot he actually had a, a lot of hospital issues and lung issues growing up as well and so he gave me his phone number and told me to call him and and we sat and talked for about an hour just about hospital stays and and lung issues and that kind of thing and it it's one of those moments where it's nice to know you're not the only one that goes through something obviously you know he didn't get hit by a train but he still had a similar problem. And so mm. having that camaraderie and being able to hear somebody say, I know, I know what that's like, that helps so that you don't feel so isolated in regards to your treatment. Amazing, bro. You're yeah. meant to be here, man. Uh, there's got to be a reason. And when there's you were talking be. about, what's the name of that, that uh, item that you were holding that you had to get to 4,000? I, it's called a spirometer. Spirometer. Yeah. So that's so interesting, right? Because you're like zoning in on breathing, right? Because how often do we even think about breathing, right? We just do it. It's just something that happens. It's happening almost for us. Yeah. Imagine if we had to think and tell ourselves to breathe the same way we would like lift a cup up or like close something or take our hand off like something hot and for every m movement we had to breathe well and that's the crazy thing about you were it doing too. that like you were I, thinking about to, every breath i had to do it even when i left the hospital and i and i was hitting the spirometer at four four thousand when i first started hitting it and i went and got my checkup at the doctor and she was listening to my lungs and she said you're only breathing with the top half of your lungs. She said, you need to breathe with all, like all of them. If you're not inhaling and, and expanding the lower section of your lungs, you could have serious problems there as well. And so I had to, every time I would take a breath and every time I would do this barometer, I had to think about where my lungs were inflating and how to change the intake of air into my body so that it would inflate those areas, which is a very crazy thing to try and think about. And to this day, I've still got a section that the lower set, lower part of my left lung that's collapsed and it'll never, wow. it'll never come back. It's permanently collapsed. But Bro, life I is mean, amazing, right? Like here you are. Yeah. Right. And how do you even, how do you even feel like you wake up every morning? Like, I know I feel blessed, even yeah. though I'm like, oh, I got to go do a bunch of shit. I feel I, I'm like, yo, I get to do a bunch of shit. Right. Yeah. But like, how do you even feel? Because like, bro, you've been through the ringer. Like, what a fucking year for you. Sometimes it's tough to think about. 
Yeah. It, it's hard to fathom because I don't remember. That's the worst part. And I know yeah. I was conscious at the time because my girlfriend was there. She said, I, I was fully awake. I was asking for help, but that's the only thing I could say was I need help. And then, and then I died. And that's, that's the hard part to wrap my brain around just because I wasn't, I wasn't actually there remembering, or I can't remember, you know, anything about it. But now I sit here and anytime things are bad, that's something that pops into the back of my head and says, you couldn't even have experienced this six months ago. You're lucky that you're having a bad day because you could have, that could have been it. And there was no life flash before my eyes because I don't remember it. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't have any of those moments that would have solidified my time on earth. It would have just been game over. Yeah. Like the plug being pulled while you're playing the game. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You have no chance to save and go back and remember what you accomplished thus far. But the plug was plug the plug was put back. Yeah. And that's freaking amazing, man. I'm yeah. so happy to hear this. I you know, my heart goes out to everyone that your your lady and your family you know, I it's so tough dealing with anyone in, in our families going through it. Uh yeah. you know I, w- I wanna shout out um, you know, the Russell family. They're dealing with a loss right now, you know, big family friend. And it's not easy, like, and this woman's gone now, you know, like, and yeah. this is like a cornerstone of their life. Yeah. And um, so I shout out anyone who's there for their family. I know family, I always say, like, family and love, it's not convenient, right? Yeah. Like doing, th- it's not like, oh, well, I'll just do it when I feel like it. It's not like playing a, a game on, on vacation, yeah. family. It's it's sometimes inconvenient and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's like you weren't expecting it. And then all of a sudden 2 AM something happens. You got to be there for your, your people and it's showing up at any time. And, you know, I shout out everyone who shows up for their people. Yeah. Friends, family. It's, and like, you know, life has its highs and lows, you know, and it's just being there for your people during the lows. Yeah. And um, getting them back, even to the mids, because it's it's better than the lows, and and they find, till they find their way back, you know, to the highs. Yeah. But yo, shout out to your whole family, your girl, the the battle I rap community, and you, bro. Like, it's amazing to hear. Thank you. I wouldn't be here without all of them. It, and one of the craziest things about this whole situation, too, I. Uh, I'll just bring up this part because this is the last kind of, I guess, somber element to the story. And then I could tell some funnier stories about my time in the hospital because I did have some funny stories while I was there also. Um, But I was supposed to be going to an event, a battle rap event that coming weekend. And I was going to pick up my, my, really good friend uh johnny carpenter and bringing him to the event and so when i woke up in the hospital and was told that i had been in an accident and that was the only thing at the time that i could solidify in my brain but i also had a a breathing tube in because i was on life support and so i couldn't speak and so i had to write in my girlfriend's hand the message that I was trying to ask. And the only thing that I could ask at the very start of sort of having a little bit of consciousness was, is Johnny okay? Because I thought for sure that there was no way that I could have gotten hit during the week. If I got into a car accident, it must've happened on the weekend. And I thought for sure that if I was in this bad a shape that Johnny must've been in bad shape also. So I had to make sure that he was okay because that was really bothering me while I was laying there. And I couldn't even fully grasp, even after I learned that he was okay, the 
drugs that they had me on had warped my mind to the point that I couldn't even understand that really. Wow. But yeah, it was, it was tough, but like I said, there was some, there was some funnier, better days that definitely uh, made up for it. So life bro is just so it's just something right just thinking of and it, and what you said like i couldn't even ex i almost couldn't have experienced a bad day yeah like my bad days and good ones were almost no more and here you are you know like you know putting on for your city putting on for the battle rap community you know, and um, it just I'm I'm inspired, bro. I'm inspired forever on this. I, uh, I really appreciate that. It just you know, fall down nine, get up ten, and here yeah. you are, right? And it's just life, life. Just it's just like such a metaphor for life, but it just it makes you appreciate what you have. Yeah. And, and I'm seeing this on a daily basis, bro. You just have to cherish everyone. Yeah, like, I, I mean, I really never know, right? And it's just you gotta you gotta treat every everyone good. Not, of course, we have our moments, right? But like, yeah, I just gotta be grateful. I've uh, I, I've seen lots of things. I mean, you always see pictures that get posted uh, of saying things like, "You don't want to leave on bad terms because you never know what day could be your last," or "You never think to take pictures until." that's all you have are pictures. And that's something that I've really come to terms with now is that I want to make sure that I have something from these memories. I want to make sure that when, well, when I came out to New York last, which was in October, this is a really weird karmaic situation or, or not, but ironic situation where the best battle I ever had was on iBattle. That happened in October of um, 2021. And that battle got released on YouTube on January 10th, the day that I got hit by the train. Mm. And when I came out to New York, I got pictures with two people. All these people that have showed so much love to me and all these people that I would consider everything from acquaintances all the way up to great friends. And I have two pictures to remember that. And not going to lie, don't have the best memory uh, when it comes to remembering things that happened before the accident <laughs> anymore. Mm. So it, it's, you know, moving forwards, I'm making sure to take more pictures to spend more time remembering because since the accident, my memory's great, but everything before that is a little spotty. Mm. So that's something, bro. What I've been doing, bro, I, I got into this habit um, pretty much right in the end of the year. And it's something I've been wanting to do my entire life it's journaling. And, yeah. And it was just like, I never knew where to fit it in, I never knew. If I do it at the end of the night, it, when I'm done with the day, and what I've learned, I do it for five minutes in the beginning of the day. Yeah. And it complete and that flicking that switch has enabled me. And now it's like a momentum thing. It's like I, there were a few days I didn't do it, but it was because I didn't bring my new journal to the home or whatever. Yeah. And I felt it. I like felt it. It was almost like not eating almost. Yeah. Like it, be it became imprinted and I've, I've been doing it for like six months now. It's at a point where I've, I've kind of just lost track because now yeah. it's just like second nature, but, um, yeah. it's like asking like, how many breakfasts you've eaten in the last <laughs> yeah, X amount I, of time. I, so I even, yeah, I even do it before breakfast. And if you know, my girl, she know she would tell you how important breakfast is to me. <laughs> so if I'm doing it before breakfast, it's because I don't want to miss it. But 
just jot in a little, and it's in a little book, so it's not a lot of pressure. It's maybe like ten lines. Oh, yesterday was dope. I got, I took my dad to the movies. We went to dinner with my my sister. Oh yeah. man, I'm feeling a little stress. I'm praying that this works out. You know, and that could be it, right? But like, bro, I was able to go back like months. And I'm like, oh snap! I was able to tap into that day. Like, on the random day, my boy took me to IHOP, where I may yeah. have forgot, but like. I've, I've I've been doing that, bro, and I've been doing something lately, too, that's been really cool. I kind of do something out the blue. Like, I'll just do something that's not in my normal programming. Like, yeah. Because then you definitely remember it. If you go to a random deli in, in Toronto, right, and you're in Alberta, right? Like, you do something out yeah. the blue. Yeah. But I highly recommend that to anyone. It doesn't have to be crazy. Like, oh, I'm going skydiving on a Tuesday when I have work the next morning. <laughs> or, or like, it's my mom's birthday. I'm going to go do this instead. Like, don't do that. But like, like the other day where I just, I played basketball. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take my boom box to the court, play basketball, and then go read a book in the park. And it was something I never do. Yeah. And it felt so good. It felt so good to do something that wasn't in my normal programming because I've I've got kind of programmed since COVID kind of sticking to the same schedule, coming home, being kind of yeah. secluded, you know, just with one or two people. And it, it's been good to kind of break out of these things and just and uh, yeah, so that's great, bro. Taking the photos are key. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited and definitely like getting back into battling again. Uh, you know, I got I got a bunch of stuff lined up. None of it's been announced, so I can't talk about where I'm going to be or when I'm going to be there, but I got a lot of plans for making sure that it's imprinted and it's a really special time. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Bro, I'm just inspired. Just inspired. to, And I'm already inspired. So, like, you you pour you pour more gas on the fire. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just kind of – I get inspired. I'm like – I'll see a little dog that's like in a wheelchair and I'll get so inspired. I'll be like, yo, I got to take life to the night. I got to do this. Oh, I could do anything. Like the little dog's doing it and has the big cone on its head. Like I'll get inspired, but like, bro, like your story, it's something, man. And I'm I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you're here and smiling and, and, and talking about, you know, capturing moments with the people and, yeah. and, and, you know, and make and leaving your mark, you know, and, and just having uh, good times, you know, have, yeah. making good memories. Thank you. I appreciate that. I can, I can confidently say that the accident was the worst thing that ever happened to me and simultaneously was the best thing that ever happened. To wow. Me. And because it totally shifted the way I think in a much more positive way. Wow. And, and it was, yeah, it was, it was both terrible and special. So. That's perspective, right? It's like we put filters on photos. We could put filters on, on us, but they could be good filters. They don't always yeah. have to be, oh man, if this happens, I'm screwed. And sometimes that thought may come, but yeah we could adjust the filter and be like, well, but if I do try this and I mess up, there's going to be a lesson too, right? And, you know, um, as you see, I do a lot of talking to myself, um, but it's all good because it's how I get, I work alone most of the day, so that's how I make it happen. But, uh, but yeah, bro, I'm, I'm inspired by your story. Um, so the, this kind of, um, this is a game I play. It's called okay. Dream On. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of throw random questions your way. I do not right. know even know what I'm going to ask you right now. All um, right. So I'm going to just throw a couple of questions your way. And some of these questions may be like, damn, like that that's a crazy dream. But that's the whole point of this. I want people to think a little bit outside the box Yeah. and dream a little crazy. You know, the way Kanye did in, in the hospital bed, you know, yeah. like. He was dreaming. No one said, some people said his dreams were too crazy and look at what he's done, right? So yeah. I encourage people to have a little bit crazy dreams 
because that's where it starts, right? So uh, let, let's let's play this and see where it goes. All righty. So if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Australia. Nice. Yeah. Don't even have to think about that one. I've always wanted to go there. I, in battle rap, I call myself Steve Irwin, the mean version. <laughs> and that was a uh, play on the fact that, you know, I was a zookeeper for seven years, but it also was because growing up, that was, I mean, he was my idol. I wanted to be him and do what he did. And, and so I have always wanted to go to Australia. I love it. Yeah. If you could have any pet in the world <laughs> and it was okay, there was no regular, like you were able to get the license or the pass the regulations or whatever it was, you could have any pet. Ah, oh, see now this one's really going to make me think because I worked with a lot I of know, different kinds I know. of animals. <laughs> I know. Uh, it would it would probably I hope be I hope none of them are listening. I don't want you to offend <laughs> anyone. <laughs> um it would be an Australian animal and it would it would probably be a wombat. Like platypus are my favorite animal, mm -hmm. but they're aquatic, so you can't really hang out with them. Wombats are like really big, tanky herbivores. They got a mean bite, but that I think that'd be the one. Okay, okay. I would probably have a panda. Yeah? I'd probably have a panda. Yeah, they're just super chill, lazy. They'll probably they can eat get a... mean, though. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess anyone can, and any animal can. <laughs> <laughs> so, one that, all right. Yes. You could battle in any arena. What stadium or what venue... There's a couple classics. See, before October, I would have said the Meth Lab Studio, where you know Method Man's one, but I've already done that. <laughs> there we go. So now, I would have to say the the Fiddler's uh, Pub in England. They have really great events there, and it's it's a very classic. Uh, UK battle rap area. Mm. So I'd really like to battle there one day. That'd be really sick, man. Yeah. Could learn any language. What would you learn? If I could learn any language, I think I would, I have to stay away from Spanish because I have terrible ability to roll my R's. Okay. I can't do that at all. I mean, if I could learn it, it would be cool, but I would probably say uh, Arabic. That'd yeah. be, that'd be Arabic is really, really cool to hear as a language when spoken fluently. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Shout out to P. Mars and all my Arabic familia right there. He, he knows some, and I know his parents are fully fluent. They're, they're from Egypt. Really? Both his parents, yeah. I didn't even know that. Next yeah, time yeah. next time I'm out in Staten, I got to see, you know, I got to figure out what he knows, what he can say. Next time I'm out in Staten, we'll have to get together too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, bro, he knows some. I know he took Arabic in college. Okay. I I don't even know how he passed all these. He's he's on some next stuff, like <laughs> classes that he's taken in college. He's like, yeah, I'm just taking Arabic as a as an elective like yeah arabic well i'm like well of course you are like it yeah. makes sense you're, you're a monster <laughs> um that's amazing bro if you could attend any college and take one class what class would it be what would you want to advance your mind in it doesn't in, even have to be the college. It could be just the class or whatever works for you. So when now I, I'm not a zookeeper anymore, but animals will always hold a very, very special place in my heart. And when people would ask me where I went to school to be able to do zookeeping, I, I have a degree in zoology, but 
you can zookeep with any science degree here in Canada. In the States, there is an actual zookeeping class slash program that you oh, take wow. to be able to, to do that kind of thing. And I think that's what I would take. I don't know if it's in, if it's in Texas or if it's in some other Midwestern state, but that would be the, the class or program that I'd like to take. That's sick. Yeah. You could have dinner with any hip hop artist. Who would you want to sit down and, and chop it up with? That I haven't already been able to chop up with before? Yeah, yeah. My, I'm sure you've chopped it up with quite a few. Well, I was just talking about how how I'm, I'm really into Rhyme Asylum right now. So I would, I would have to say that I'd love to sit down and chop it up with Possessed from, from Rhyme Asylum. I got a lot of questions that I that I'd love to ask that guy. He's kind of been off the grid since 2010, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to wow. chop it up with him. That's sick, bro. I I love this game, right? Because it's like I I'm I'm guilty of it. Like I'll think of stuff that I know I can do. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, I don't I don't mean to limit myself, but I get. I'm like, yeah, you know, I I could get the, I could get this crib, you know, I, it's in my yeah. budget or whatever. And that, and it's like it is sometimes you got to deal with reality. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. well, I could, based on what I'm making, this is what I could probably get. Yeah. But then there's like the, the crazy dreams, like going away, connecting with someone that you don't know, and a lot of this stuff, bro, is, I don't want to say a call away. But like if we made a call or if we made an attempt, yeah, we would learn something, even if it didn't yeah. happen, right? If a son, uh, what's his name again? I'm sorry, the the guy from Asylum. Uh, possessed. Possessed. Yeah, like you may learn. You're gonna learn something from reaching out to his people or management, tweeting him, right? Either you learn from these experiences, and it's like yeah. I, I try to encourage people. And dream a little crazy. Yeah. Take reality where... out of the equation for a split yeah. second. Yeah. And talk about your dreams. Don't leave them under your bed with your old cassette tapes. Yeah. I'm a fan of keeping my cassettes, you know, right, having them out and stuff, you know, just having a bunch, just, just chilling. Um, Look at that. Got a bunch. But like, don't just leave them under your bed. Um, keep your, take your cassettes out, you know. Just, but have your dreams out too. Don't just yeah. leave them under your bed like your cassettes. Rock them proudly like me. Um, and talk to people because you never know, right? I always tell people like, you're talking to me. What if I know, the guy you want to meet? Yeah. And I'm like, bro, that's my uncle. Or you you yeah. never know. Well, right? I'll hit him up. You can talk to him tomorrow. You might not have dinner with him, but I'll get you a phone call with him. Yeah, yeah. Just talking to people and be like, "Yo, I really want to do this one day, right?" And it's yeah, it's it's just cool. The hardest thing in life as a human is to realize because we are in our own head and we're focused on our own conscious being and what our lives are like is that when you drive down a street or you walk down a street and you see somebody else that they are also experiencing all of that same stuff they have their own life they have their own family their own friends their own everything that you've ever experienced they have also experienced and have their own version of that and so while we may all be in the same universe it's almost like we all have our own little one that we function in. Yeah. And so you never know what you're going to be able to connect by talking to anyone. And they always say seven strands, isn't it? Like, Oh, seven, seven degrees seven of separation. That'll get you to everyone. Yeah. Seven degrees of separation. Yeah. It's so real. It's so real. And, um, and it's cool, right? It's just, it's, it's just something cool. So, Thank you for playing. That was fun. Um, 
and just hearing things that you know matter to you it, it really helped me get to know even yeah. more about you and, and, and things that are, matter to you where you would want to go who you would want to visit an animal you would want to have um, <laughs> that'd be sick bro what would you even name the wombat i know i know i'm putting a lot of pressure on you today no that's fine <laughs> I never really thought of a good wombat <laughs> name. Like, I feel you. I, feel you. I mean, there's the easy ones like Wally. Wally <laughs> is an easy wombat name. Right. But I feel like Tank would be a good one too because that's be kind of what they like. Yeah, yeah. But I had to pick a herbivore too because, you know, way easier to feed a herbivore than it is to feed a carnivore. <laughs> so <laughs> that's real. That's sick, bro. I, if you get that wombat, you, you got to tag me in that photo. <laughs> I'll do that when you get your panda and you tag me in the photo with the panda. <laughs> no, my girl, bro. We, we may find a way to get that panda. <laughs> She's been like, yo, we'll go to China and, you know, we'll see. We could just fit it in the bag. I'm like, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, Shit, um, I may have just exposed us uh, for a future burglary of the panda. <laughs> Sorry, you incriminated dude. yourself, unfortunately. <laughs> but that doesn't mean the plan can't change. <laughs> but yeah, man, bro, this is. I'm just. I'm inspired by your story, bro. Um, it's just amazing to hear. What would you tell? Like, you've given me some amazing. You've given our listeners some amazing, just concepts of looking at things and taking a, an approach when kind of the world the world's on your shoulders yeah what what are what's kind of like a, a a message that you say to yourself like maybe on a day where you're not having the best day or you're you're trying to lift yourself up like what's kind of your advice to yourself that you kind of get yourself back on, on track i i guess It's, it's a, because of the situation that I was in, which wouldn't be everybody's situation, but I, I look at it and go, at least I can have a bad day because, because a bad day doesn't seem so bad when you realize that you, you still get to have one and it's, and it hits closer to home when you have that when you have had an experience, a, a life or death experience like that, whether you almost died or whether you have died and they brought you back or, or anything like that, it hits a little harder. But you can also apply it if you haven't been in those situations where you can say, at least I get to have a bad day because maybe I could have been in one of, situ one of those situations. And, and that's the tough thing too. You know, the, one of the biggest things that I've been struggling with also is when, you know, looking at back at things and now I was obviously conscious when that train hit me, but I don't remember it, which means that there was a period of time where I was awake and knowing things were going okay and then they weren't and the next thing i remember i wake up in the hospital and so now when i'm out and when i'm doing things in my day to day every once in a while i'll stop what i'm doing and and think you need to be here in the moment right now because 30 seconds from now, something could happen and you could wake up in the hospital in six days and not remember anything. Wow. So when you're having a bad day, it's a situation where either you look at it and say, at least I still get to have a day or you look at it and go, well, it might be bad now, but I might wake up in six days and, and be told by everyone you know, this happened, you tripped and fell and hit your head on something. Mm. And, or, you know, uh, somebody ran a red light and hit you. And so it's a combination of, of being okay with having those bad days, as well as understanding that 
you need to be centered and, and focused on what's happening to you. And if wow. you always look ahead, you could miss. I mean, they always say stop and smell the roses because you might not get to. Well, sometimes you got to stop, smell the roses and articulate what is happening in that moment. Because you might take another couple steps and wake up and not even remember that you were there smelling them in the first place. So Damn. That's some real. Damn, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. That was. That's I'm going to take that. <laughs> I'm going to take that one. Not, not, not use it, all, but I'm going to take that to the heart. So thank take you, bro. Take it and spread that it. Use powerful. it if you want to. It's fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> so you got some amazing stuff yeah. coming. Um, I know not everything could be blurted out right now, but maybe we could just let people know where to catch you, where to where to find you. I know you got a show, you got a lot of amazing things where people could tap into your journey yeah. and um, stay connected with everything you got going on. Yeah. So when it comes to to seeing me in battle rap form, if you go on YouTube and, and type in pathogenic battle rap, pathogenic versus you know, all of those kinds of things. Uh, you're going to get a ton of my battles. You're also going to get a ton of COVID-19 news because unfortunately my battle rap name also means the same thing that COVID meant and they happened at the same time. So yeah, just like that right there. Oh, that's all me. <laughs> Various different battles. Uh, so yeah, if, if you're wanting to see me in my battle rap journey, definitely check that out. Uh, every Sunday on Facebook, YouTube, if you have followed r slash rap battles, uh, I'm the co-host of a, a battle rap podcast where we talk about battle rap news all across the globe because it happens everywhere. And sometimes we primarily focus on the American side of things because that's where the bulk of it is. But we talk about Canada, the States, we talk about Nigeria, England. You know, there's tons of places. So we talk about that. That's every Sunday. And those episodes are up on Spotify. They're up on YouTube. So, you know, r slash rap battles. Uh, How do you spell it? R? Uh, yeah, like just a capital R slash rap battles. And the it's called the body cast. Got it. Yeah. And so you can find the, the episodes on there as well. Um. So if you're looking for those kinds of things, that's where you can find me. Uh, if you're looking just to, to follow me on, on social media and stuff, uh, Jacob Gregoric on Facebook. Uh, I go by the real name <laughs> on Instagram. It's Jacob underscore Gregoric as well. And on Twitter, it's pathogenic GG. Um, and, and I'm going to drop all that in the description. Cause I'm I'm from the, the world of a, an interesting last name too. So sometimes the spelling. <laughs> so make sure everyone I'm gonna drop all his links in the bios and the descriptions in case you missed the, the, yeah. the spelling of it. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a funky last name, that's for sure. But uh, additionally, as well, uh, if you know, for anyone that didn't know, but uh, David and I work together and created a, a merch line as well. So if you're wanting to find that or support that, you can go through Stereotype as well. Uh, it's an amazing graphic that was made by a, a really good friend of mine. His name is Martin from Macedonia. And Shout out I'm to Martin, actually yeah. wearing one of those shirts right now. So it's myself and a, a gorilla that's protecting me because my team is uh, gutter gorillas and it's stopping a train and the train spells out path so it's a really really cool shirt everyone that's that's got them has been amazed by them and so if you're wanting to to support not only myself but david as well then yeah, then you can grab that on stereotype yeah shout out to i battle um yes. paul mars lex that's the reason why we're we're homies uh paul had a vision for us to connect he knew we I should do this interview months ago. He knew we should have done merch. He 
He just always has a pulse on people I should meet. Shout out to my brother from another mother of friends of almost 30 years, P. Mars. Um, shout out to Lex, I battle. Shout out to Martin. Um, him and I have been cooking hundreds of stuff um, and many more on the way. Can't wait to share it. He's just so solid. And he was the the mind behind that design, yeah. and um, yeah, bro. And shout out, yeah, so many people have stepped up, and 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 uh, it's just dope to ship these all over the place. So yeah, I'm printing it's them here, really and cool. I'm like, oh wow, this is in Washington. Oh, they're in Toronto. Oh, they're in Seattle. Yeah. Like, it's all over. It's amazing, man. It I'm really gonna put is. the link for all that as well, and in, in the mm-hmm. description. Uh, to get the merch, I battle, find path, pathogenic all over. And, and bro, thank you, man. You know, your story will forever, you know, ring in my heart in, in terms of just it'll alert me whenever I'm looking down to look back up and be like, yeah. yo, at least I got to have a bad day. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about this kind of stuff. So course man you know and for everyone tuned in make sure to you know spread the word get get the word out you know this show is not about drama if if the, those are the type of shows you like you're not gonna like this one you know we, we just talk to people about their dreams hearing about their humble beginnings how they turn nothing into something how they've overcome you know struggles hardships and made their dreams a reality you know, so shout out to all, all the people that have been in, tuned in for so many years. And make sure to subscribe so you get to meet amazing dreamers every week on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and all that good stuff. So thank you all. And don't stop dreaming, everyone. <laughs>